Part 3. The Rat. Chapter 19. Stay you, cried Vicus, as Luxa, Henry, and Merith sprang up, swords in hand. Stay you? The rat regarded the three armed humans with amusement. Yes, stay you, or I shall be forced to move. And that always puts me in an ill humor, he said languidly. Luxa and Merith stopped uncertainly, but Henry ignored Vicus's command and lunged at the rat. Without moving another muscle, the rat flicked his tail. It cracked like a whip, knocking the sword from Henry's hand. The blade spun across the stone floor and slammed into the cavern wall. Henry gripped his wrist in pain. The hardest lesson for a soldier to learn is to obey orders he believes are wrong, said the rat philosophically. Take care, lad, or you shall end up like me, stripped of any respectable rank, and warming your shabby old hide at the fire of your enemies. The rat nodded at the old man. Vicus? Rip Rind, said Vicus with a smile. We have just commenced dining. Will you join us? I thought you'd never ask, said Rip Rind, pushing himself off the wall and slouching over to the fire. He squatted back on his haunches next to Solove. My dear Solove, how kind of you to fly out to greet me, and with a war on, too. I would scarcely have missed an opportunity to break bread with you, Rip Rind, said Solove. Oh, come now. You know perfectly well you only tagged along to wheedle information out of me, said Rip Rind, and to gloat over your victory at the flames. I destroyed you, said Solove with glee. Your army turned tail and ran howling into the river. Army, snorted Rip Rind. Why, they were as much an army as I am a butterfly. I'd have stood a better chance fighting with the crawlers. The rat looked at Temp and Tick, who were cowering against the wall and sighed. Present company accepted, of course. Boots frowned and toddled over to Riprint. She pointed her chubby finger up at him. You mouse? Yes, I'm a mouse. Squeak, squeak. Now, shoo, shoo, back to your little bug friends, said Riprint, picking up a hunk of dried beef. He tore off a piece with his teeth and noticed Boots hadn't moved. He pulled back his lips to reveal a row of jagged teeth and gave her a sharp hiss. Oh, said Boots, scurrying back to her roaches. Oh, don't do that, said Gregor. The rat turned his glowing eyes on him, and Gregor was shocked by what he saw there. The intelligence, the deadliness, and most surprisingly, the pain. This rat was not like Fangor and Shed. He was much more complicated and much more dangerous. For the first time in the Underland, Gregor felt completely out of his league. If he fought this rat, he wouldn't stand a chance. He would lose. He would be dead. Ah, this must be our warrior, said Ripperin softly. How very like your daddy you are. Don't scare my sister, said Gregor, trying to keep his voice steady. She's only a baby. From what I hear, she's got more guts than the lot of you combined, said Ripperin. Of course, courage only counts when you can count. I'm presuming the rest of you can count and will be screwing your courage to the sticking place any minute now. The rat glanced around at Luxa, Merith, and Henry, who were keeping their distance. The bats were extending and folding their wings, unsure of what to do. Well, come then. Isn't anyone else hungry? I hate dining alone. It makes me feel so in loved. I did not prepare them, Rip Red, said Vigus. Clearly, said the rat, clearly my arrival is an unexpected pleasure. He went to work on his beef bone, making an awful scraping sound. Meet you, Rip Red, the gnar, said Vigus to the group. He shall be joining the quest as your guide. There was a quick breathy sound as half of those gathered inhaled sharply. A long pause followed in which no one exhaled. Gregor tried to make sense of what Vicus had announced so calmly. A rat. He was leaving them in the hands of a rat. Gregor wanted to object, but his throat had frozen. Finally, Luxus spoke up in a hoarse voice with hatred. No, he shall not. We do not travel with rats. The prophecy of Grey requires it, Luxa, said Solove. One nar, beside. Beside could mean anything, snarled Henry. Perhaps we leave the nar dead beside us. Perhaps you do, but having witnessed your last attack, I doubt it, said Rip Red, starting on a wedge of cheese. We have killed five rats since midday, said Luxa. You mean the idiots that I handpicked for cowardice and ineptitude? Oh, yes. Bravo, your highness. That was a masterly piece of combat, said Rip Red, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Do not flatter yourself. You have yet fought a rat. They themselves killed Fangor and Shed, said Merith bravely. Well, then, I stand corrected. 
Fangor and Shed were excellent fighters. On the rare occasion they were sober, said Rip Red. However, I expect that they were outnumbered and somewhat thrown by the arrival of the warrior. What say you, warrior? Do you refuse to go with me as well? Gregor looked into Rip Red's mocking, tortured eyes. He wanted to refuse. But if he did, could he ever find his dad? As if following his thoughts, Vicus spoke up. You need Rip Red to guide you to your father. These tunnels are unmapped by humans. You would never find your way without him. Still, he was a rat. Gregor had only been in the Underland a few days, and he already despised rats. They had killed Luke's and Henry's parents, imprisoned his father, and almost eaten him and Boots. He felt a kind of power surging through him when he thought of how much he hated them. But if all rats were bad, who was this strange creature staring at him from across the fire, offering to be their guide? So, what's in this for you? said Gregor to Rip Red. A fair question, said Rip Red. Well, warrior, I am planning to overthrow King Gorger, and I need you to help me. By doing what? said Gregor. I don't know, admitted Rip Red. None of us does. Gregor rose and caught Vicus by the arm. I have to talk to you alone, he said. The anger in his voice surprised even himself. Well, he was angry. The rat was not part of what he agreed to. This was not what he had signed on for. Vicus took Gregor's mood in stride. Maybe he had expected it. They walked about 20 yards away from the group. So how long have you had this plan with the rat? Asked Gregor. Vicus thought a moment. I'm not sure exactly. Perhaps two or so years? Of course, it was all dependent upon your arrival. How come you didn't tell me about it before? Demanded Gregor. I do not believe in giving people more information than they can handle, said Vicus. Who says I can't handle it? I can handle it, said Gregor, obviously not handling it. Perhaps you can, at least more easily than Luke's and Henry. I may well have told you if we had ever finished our discussion of the prophecy of Grey, said Vicus. No doubt you would have asked, and yes, I may well have told you. Gregor pulled the prophecy out from his pocket and said, let's finish it now. He searched out the part of the prophecy where they'd left off, one gnar beside and one lost up ahead. So, Rip Red is the gnar, and my dad is the one lost up ahead, said Gregor. He read on, and eight will be left when we count up the dead. What does that mean? asked Gregor, pointing to the line. If you add up all the players in the prophecy, two over, two under, two flyers, two crawlers, two spinners, one gnar, and one lost, you have twelve said Vicus gravely. But by the end of the quest, only eight will remain alive. Four will be dead, but no one knows which four. Oh, said Gregor, stunned. He'd heard the words before, but they only registered now. Four of us, dead. But eight, alive, Gregor, said Vicus gently, and perhaps a world saved. Gregor couldn't deal with that part now, wondering who would be left standing at the end of the day. He pushed on to the final stanza of the prophecy. The last who will die must decide where he stands. The fate of the eight is contained in his hands. So bid him take care, bid him look where he leaps, as life may be death, and death life again reaps. I don't get this last part, said Gregor. Nor do I, nor does anyone. It's very cryptic. I believe no one will fully understand it until the last moment has arrived, said Vicus. Gregor, it is not pleasant, it is not easy, but it is essential what I ask you to do. Essential to you, if you wish to find your father. Essential to my people, if they are to survive. Gregor felt his anger ebbing and fear filling the empty spaces it left. He took another tack. I don't want to go with that rat, said Gregor, almost pleading. He'll kill us. No, you cannot judge Rip Red by what you know of other rats. He has wisdom unique in any creature. Things were not always so bad between humans and rats. When Solove and Rip Red and I were younger, we all lived in relative peace. Rip Red would see that restored. But King Gorger wishes all humans dead, said Vicus. So you're saying Rip Red's a good rat, said Gregor, choking on the words. If he were not, would I trust my granddaughter to his care, asked Vicus. Your granddaughter, said Gregor blankly. Luke's mother was my daughter Judith, said Vicus. You're her grandpa? Why does she call you Vicus? asked Gregor. 
These people were so weird and formal. How could he not have known that? It is our way, said Vicus. Look after her. If this is hard for you, know it is torture for Luxa. I haven't said I'm going yet, said Gregor. He looked into the old man's eyes. All right, I'm going. Is there anything else I need to know that you haven't told me? Only this. Despite what I said, I knew you were the warrior from the first moment I spied you, said Vicus. Thanks. Great. That's very helpful, said Gregor. And they returned to the group. Okay. Boots and I are going with the rat. Who else is in? There was a pause. Where the princess goes? Go we, said Temp. What say you, Luxa? said Vicus. What can I say, Vicus? Can I return to our people and tell them I withdrew from their quest when our survival hangs in the balance? said Luxa bitterly. Of course you cannot, Luxa. That is why he times it so, said Henry. You could choose to, started Vicus. I could choose, I could choose, retorted Luxa. Do not offer me a choice when you know none exists. She and Henry turned their back on Vicus. Flyers, said Solove, as Vicus seemed to have lost the ability to talk. Aurora and I go with our bonds, muttered Ares. Then it is settled. Come, Merith, we are needed at home, said Solove. A distraught Merith quickly made up packs of food for the members of the quest. Fly you high, all of you, he said in a strained voice and climbed on his bat. Solave mounted her bat and unrolled her map. While Rip Red helped her work out the safest route back to Regalia, Vicus moved to Henry and Luxa. Neither of them would turn to look at him. I would not part this way, but I understand your hearts. Perhaps one day you will be able to forgive me this moment. Fly you high, Henry. Fly you high, Luxa, said Vicus. He waited for a response, but none came. He turned and climbed heavily onto his bat. As miserable as Gregor felt about being dumped with a rat, his heart ached for Vicus. He wanted to scream at Luxa, say something. Don't let your grandpa fly off like this. Four of us aren't coming back. But the words caught in his throat. Part of him wasn't ready to forgive Vicus for abandoning them either. Fly you high, Gregor the Overlander, said Vicus. Gregor struggled with how to respond. Should he ignore Vicus? Let him know that none of them, not even an overlander, could forgive him? Just as he has steeled himself against replying, Gregor thought of the last two years, seven months. Was it 15 days now? There were so many things he wished he'd said to his dad when he'd had the chance. Things like how special it was when they went on the roof at night and tried to find stars. Or how much he loved it when they took the subway out to the stadium to watch a baseball game. Or just the way he felt lucky that of all the people in the world, his dad was his dad. He didn't have room inside for any more unspoken words. The bats were rising into the air. He only had a second. Fly you high, Vicus, he yelled. Fly you high. Vicus turned back, and Gregor could see tears shining on his cheeks. He lifted up a hand to Gregor in thanks.